How to do something is the wrong sequence to start with. Like, what's the strategy for being fit and healthy? It's not that complex, and yet 70% of the U.S. is overweight. It's like, you just have to do it. It's, it's not a strategy <laughs> problem. What it is is why aren't they doing it? It's because they have a story. And everyone does this, entrepreneurs, business people, everyone does this. When we get fearful, when we've tried something and we're not succeeding as fast as we want, when we are afraid of failing, we come up with a story about how it's not our fault or how we're gonna do it in the future because then we don't have to feel bad. Feeling bad makes us have to deal with it. Most people are overwhelmed, so they just, they come up with a story about, I've tried everything. If you tried everything, you'd be fit. <laughs> you'd be <laughs> yeah. You know, I tried millions of things, millions name them. Three things they did 50 yeah. times that don't work, right. right? But I think if you can come up, when you change the story, when you come up with a new set of beliefs, you'll find yourself finding the strategy or using the strategies that already work that are there that right now your mind says, oh, it won't work. And the best way to change people, you got strategy, story, is state. And I always share this with business owners. You've got to be able to produce a different state in your people. There has to be something compelling. There has to be a sense of mission. Most people have a belief about what their real potential is no matter what you tell them. And that affects how much action they take. And of course that affects the result. And then ironically, that result reinforces their belief. And then that belief affects it. So I'll give you an example. Let's say a person has unlimited potential, we all agree but they take little action, little results. Why? Because they have to start with a problem with their belief. They don't believe it's really going to happen for me. Maybe for Frank Kearns because he's got the cool hair and stuff, or maybe it's for you because you're so driven, but it's not me. Maybe Tony Robbins because he's a freak, got these big teeth. Whatever their thought process is, right? They got this thing, right? But what happens is, if you believe that there's very little potential, how much action are you going to take? Nothing. Nothing, little. And when you take little potential with a little action, what kind of results do you get? Lousy little results. And when you get little results, what does that do to your belief? You go, see, I told you this was a waste of time. Sold you this wouldn't work. And then what happens? You tap even less potential. You take even less action. You get even worse results, and your belief gets even weaker. And this sucker feeds on itself until you are in a downward spiral. It's poisonous. It's poisonous, and it's self-fulfilling. Now, what if something could happen that could come along and fill you with a sense of absolute certainty? Not like, I believe, but I mean, where you know. In you guys' case, mine as well, we knew because we had to, because we burned the boats. There was no other option. We had to find a way. We had. We weren't going to live that way. We all did it in different ways and for different reasons. But in essence, that was it. If you get yourself in a state of certainty that this is going to work, I'm going to find the way. And if this doesn't work, I will make the way. Then you tap a lot more potential. And when you're certain in your potential, you take massive action. When you take massive action, you really believe in something. You get great results. When you get great results, your brain goes, "See, I told you I was a stud." I told you this thing would work out. Now you're even stronger. You tap more potential, take greater action, greater results. That's how you went from 300 bucks in a week to 2,500 in five days to 100,000 in a month to a million bucks in a day. Same thing with you. And we get momentum. That's why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Is there such thing as, uh, I guess, central habits that can help to shift and transform other aspects of your life? Because that's something that I've noticed a little bit where if I start eating better or if I start going to the gym every day, it's almost like a domino or ripple mm. effect where these other habits start to pick up naturally because yeah. I'm starting to feel better. So like, cause I've been going to the gym five days a week. So now when I come home, I don't feel like binging out on junk food. I feel like eating better food or if I wake up early, uh, is that something you've noticed in your research? Yeah, sure. So there are two ways to answer this question. So the first way is um, what you're describing is often sometimes called a keystone habit. Uh, and the idea is you do one thing and it like ripples into other areas of your life. And so for me, it's exercise. Like if I go to the gym, then I get the benefits of exercise, but I also tend to eat better. I like, for some reason, I just don't want to waste it. Um, I also focus more. So I have sort of that like post workout high, uh, after I, after I work out, uh, and then I sleep better because I'm tired from the workout, which means I wake up the next morning and I have better energy. Um, and at no point was I trying to build better sleep habits or energy habits or focus habits or nutrition habits, but all that kind of just came as a side effect of doing this one thing of going to the gym. Hmm. Some other common uh, keystone habits are budgeting. Sometimes people say when they pay off debt, you'll then they'll like start to get in shape, or they, um, you know, build. But they're more social and have better relationships. Or like, there's all kinds of things that kind of come out of that. Um, going for a daily walk is a really big one. It's a very common one among creators in particular. There's a book called Daily Rituals by Mason Curie, 
and he basically just writes down like what i don't know it's 100 or 150 famous like creators and scientists and whatever what their daily routines were and a lot of them were raging alcoholics and on amphetamines and all kinds of other stuff but the ones who uh were more healthy a daily habit a daily habit like walking was a really big part of their routine um visualization is a big one especially for performers like a comedian or something they'll often visualize the same kind of result or professional athletes uh, before they step out on the stage or step out on the court thinking small is what gets great things done verse 63 achieve greatness in little things take on difficulties while they are still easy do great things while they are still small the sage the sage one of my daughter's names, the sage, does not attempt anything very big and thus achieves greatness. Greatness comes from being in the moment, here, present, in the now. The sage confronts difficulties but never experiences them. This is the idea of thinking small. And finally, I'd like to see you change from this thought. Change from seeing yourself as separate to seeing yourself as connected to everyone and everything in the universe. Okay, so let's be crystal clear. Um, uh, what vulnerability is actually requires strength to do. It requires unbelievable strength to, to, to come into a meeting and say, I'm struggling with this COVID thing. Um, I'm not sleeping and, and I, and, and I, and I fear that I'm not there for you guys. Um, and, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what to do. I mean, that requires unbelievable strength to be able to say that to someone. Um, and so, and so I, let us call it strength to be vulnerable, not weakness to be vulnerable. Um, if, if, um, if we are receiving feedback that we're not being vulnerable, then maybe it's true. And maybe um, our team is, is what they're really saying is, please lead us because we feel that you're not leading us. I mean, I think that's an indication. And if you don't know how to do it, um, ask, for, ask for help. Call people up and say, I know I need to do this and I don't even know the first thing to do. And yeah. start small. You don't have to go crazy. And being vulnerable doesn't mean, uh, you know, like you're talking to your therapist in, the, in a meeting. It doesn't mean letting it all out. It doesn't mean broadcasting everything. Um, uh, what it means is being honest about the, the daily machinations. Um, it's totally fine for a leader to say, um, I don't know what the future looks like. Um, I have a vision. Um, I think I know what it takes to get there, but I know I can't do it alone. I know it's going to take all of us. Um, I think a very, very easy dipping your toe into vulnerability uh, uh, is COVID, you know, um, to say, I've never gone through anything like this before. And I, there's a side of me that's kind of figuring it out as I go along and I need your help and I need your patience. Um, you know, to dip your toe, it's an amazing opportunity COVID has, has offered because nobody thinks you're weak saying, I don't know what's gonna happen. Uh, you, they think you're being honest. Um, so I think you, you need to start experimenting um, and you need someone preferably in the company who, who you trust, who can give you guidance. In other words, to, to call them up afterwards and say, how did that go? You know, you know, you need spies um, to say, is that being well received? Was I okay? Yeah. Um, and even to say out loud, 
I don't know how to do this. I'm not good at this. I've I've never I used to think vulnerability was stupid and weak and I'm learning that it's it's an expression of strength and I'm going to experiment with it. Simply saying that is a step to t- being vulnerable. To simply say I don't know how to be vulnerable to the team. But I want to try because I know it's important. Uh, that's where I would recommend starting. Well, I think, you know, it can be really anything that gets you interested. I just always I just want to make sure I'm going to be challenged the whole time because I know if I'm not given like sort of obstacles, I don't really I don't really engage in the way I want to. You're not going to be fulfilled at life by just dabbling in a bunch of little stupid things or working a a job that you're not really excited about. You need to position yourself as an artist in life. What's your art form? You got to find what that is, right? And you, you you aim at that. And then you use everything you learn as a means of building that person that you want to be. And and I really mean want to be. I don't mean should be, even those things those things are going to overlap. But the point is, if I had known my own limitations, I never would have taken the risk. And the risk led to one of my greatest artistic and personal experiences and that I not only felt completely free, I also met my husband during filming. And from this will come a lot of your financial success. From this also will come a lot of fulfillment and a lot of satisfaction because fulfillment comes from being good at something. To uh, do things that I didn't think I could do, to put myself in uncomfortable situations. Entrepreneurs work for free. He says you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? Okay, I got it. And he says, "Well, how do I make money?" He says, "That's what entrepreneurs figure out." Like they can't control their life. They can't control their environment. This happens to me when I get overscheduled. So if you keep yourself all vague and foggy, which is real easy because that's just a matter of not doing as well, then you don't know when you fail. And people might say, "Well, I really don't want to know when I fail because that's painful." Just like the game of Monopoly. Just like the game of Monopoly acquired assets and they became bigger assets. He just kept a, 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 it was called an assemblage. And it took him a while but he finally assembled this large piece of property and then he then he and Hyatt put up this giant hotel. Mm. You know, it I just and it just sold for 800 million dollars. So that's how I learned about money. I learned so much about the Hollywood movies, especially the Forest Gump. Simple never give up. Never people give up. people thinking he's dumb, but he knows what he's doing. 